Hello children. This is another time with Mommy Zion Light. Hope you are having fun. Yeah, last week we had a discussion on Jesus loves you specially. Jesus loves you specially. Hope you still remember that Jesus loves you specially. Today we have another important topic that says that Jesus loves you unconditionally. Wow, Jesus loves you unconditionally. What does that mean? It means that he does not attach his love for you to anything. He loves you the way you are. Jesus loves you the way you are. Our memory verse for today is taken from 1 John chapter 3 and verse 1. 1 John 3 verse 1. And it says, Behold, what manner of love that Jesus had bestowed on you, that you should be called the son and the daughter of the Most High God. Wow! Isn't that a privilege to be a son and a daughter of the Most High God? It is a privilege for me. I don't know about you. Thank you, Jesus, for loving you unconditionally. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me unconditionally. Good. Today, we have another topic that says Jesus loves you unconditionally. Jesus loves you unconditionally. What does that mean? What does it mean that Jesus loves you unconditionally? It means that he does not attach his love for you to anything at all. Whether you are carrying first in the class or not, whether you have beautiful clothes or not, whether you are tall, whether you are short, he does not attach Touch his love to anything. You know, there are some of our friends. If we are not as intelligent as they are, they will not want to be our friend, isn't it? Some of them, if we don't have beautiful clothes like them, they will not want to associate with us. If we don't have wealthy mommy and daddy, they will not want to associate with us. But Jesus loves you, loves you the way you are. He loves you with nothing attached to it. Our scripture reading is taken from the book of Luke, book of Luke chapter 15, 11 to 24. It's an account of prodigal son. I'm sure you still remember the story of the prodigal son. Why our memory verse is taken from 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. 1 John 3, 1. And it says, Behold what manner of love that Jesus had bestowed upon us, that we should be called the children of God. Do you know the song? Behold what manner of love that Jesus had bestowed upon us. Behold what manner of love that Jesus had bestowed upon us. Behold what manner of love Jesus had bestowed upon us. Behold what manner of love Jesus had bestowed upon you. That you should be called the Son of God, that you should be called the daughter of God, that you should be called the Son of God, that 
Ye should be called the daughter of God. That's our memory scripture, first John chapter. 3 and verse 1. Behold what manner of love that Jesus had bestowed upon you, that you should be called the son and daughter of the Most High God. Wow! Imagine such a privilege. So, the next verse day, God knows all about you. God knows all about you, knows everything about you. Even before you were formed in the womb of your mother, no wonder he says in the book of Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5, he said he knew you. He does cause him. Jesus said he knew you before you were formed in the womb of your mother. And he loved you as you are. He knew you. You. I mean you. Yes, I'm talking to you. Jesus says he knew you even before you were even formed in the womb of your mother. And he has ordained you to be great. He has ordained you to be great because he loves you so much. Now I want us to listen to our song. asking question. Some children are asking question. The song says Jesus loves them and died on the cross of Calvary for them and died for their sin and died for their sickness. And somebody is asking, does Jesus really love me? Look at this child. Look at this girl here. She's asking this question. Does Jesus still love me in sickness? Does he love me? See, I've been sick, have been in hospital for weeks. Does Jesus still love me? What answer do you have for this girl? What do you want to answer her? Do you think Jesus still loves her? Even while she's still sick and she's in the hospital? We're going to find the answer later. Say this boy, the boy is angry, very angry. I don't even know what made him angry. But he's asking, in this my anger, does Jesus still love me? Does he still love me? We are going to find the answer. Or do you have answer for him? We are going to find the answer. Look at this girl. She's in pain. Can see she's in pain to the point that she's scattered her bed. She's crying. She's in pain. And she's saying, I've heard the song that Jesus loves me, that I have been in pain. Are you sure Jesus loves me? What do you have to answer her? What, question, what answer do you have for this girl? Okay, we are going to find out. We are going to find out the answer. We are going to find out the answer. 
Let's look at the answer at Romans chapter 5 and verse 8. Romans 5 verse 8, that's where the answer is. It says, God demonstrates his own love for us while we are yet sinners. You see, he demonstrates. So nothing attached to it, whether you are sick, on the sick bed, whether you are sad, whether you are in pain, whether you are in sin, whatsoever it is, Jesus is saying, look, I still love you. My love is not conditional. It has nothing to do what is happening to you, whether you are sick. No, I love you all the same. I love you all the same. He said, but God demonstrates his love for us. While we are still sinners, Christ died for us. He gave us his best when we are still in our worst. Good. Now, we are going to do experiment. We are going to do experiment to find out what actually is in the death of Jesus Christ. What is in his blood? Why did he need to die? We are going to find out as we carry out some experiments. Join me as we carry out this experiment. Welcome, children, to this section. Can you guess what is happening here? Can you guess what we are about to do? Can you see my hands, my fingers, with gloves, isn't it? Yes, because we want to carry out an experiment that shows how powerful the blood of Jesus is. How powerful the blood of Jesus is. Join me. We want to name the instrument for our experiment. Good. This represents God's righteousness. When God created man, we had the righteousness of God in us. There was no sin at all. And God was having fellowship with us. This represents the sin that man committed. Remember, Adam and Eve disobeyed God in the Garden of Eden. And this represents self-righteousness. When somebody says, no, I don't need God, you know, I don't lie, I don't cheat, I don't steal, I don't disobey mommy and daddy, I don't need God. Self-righteousness. Why this represent the blood of Jesus? Let's now see how powerful the blood is. So we are now in our lab to perform the experiment to see how powerful the blood of Jesus is. We say that this is God's righteousness, isn't it? You know there is no sin in God at all. At all. So when he created man, the first man, Adam, and the first woman, Eve, there was no sin in them. So God was always happy with them, always coming to have fellowship with them, always having a relationship with them. They had everything that they wanted. Everything was made available to Adam and Eve by God. God loved them so much until something happened. What, what's that? Do you remember? They disobeyed God. When they disobeyed God, what happened? They uttered that righteousness. Sin entered their heart. Wow. Sin entered their heart. Can you see? Sin entered their heart when they disobeyed God. And God was angry. Because God is too holy to behold sin. He sent them away from the garden where they had everything in abundance. And they started suffering. Adam and Eve started suffering from their sin, entered the whole world. But you know what? Some people say they don't sin, that they don't commit any sin, they say they don't lie, they say they don't steal, they don't disobey mommy and daddy. That 
the self-righteousness. Let's see if self-righteousness can help this sin that Adam has committed. Don't forget in this sin is death. In this sin is sickness, is pain. Inside this sin, every bad thing is inside this sin because sin brought all the bad things to us. Now somebody said, no, I don't commit sin, I don't need God. I do my things, whatever they ask me to do, I do it. That is self-righteousness. Do you see it? This is self-righteousness. Whatever they ask me to do, I do it. I don't steal. Did he solve the problem? No. I don't lie. Did he solve the problem? No. The sin is still there. Name all the things you think he don't do. Name all the things. I don't disobey my mommy and daddy. Does it change the sin? No. So this means that our self-righteousness cannot solve this problem of sin. The only thing that can solve that problem is Christ. That's why Jesus looked. That's okay. He volunteered to die on the cross of Calvary so that he would deliver us from this sin, from this sickness, from this pain, from this poverty. Do you understand? Let's see what the blood of Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. Don't, don't forget this represents the blood of Jesus. Let's see what the blood of Jesus did for us. Now, this is the blood of Jesus. He died on the cross of Calvary and by his blood, he injected the blood into our life. Have you seen the blood of Jesus? Have you seen what the blood of Jesus did? Have you seen what the blood of Jesus did? Wow! Have you seen how powerful the blood of Jesus is? Do you see it? Wow! Do you see? The blood of Jesus has washed us all the sin, has washed all the sin away the, and the consequences, the sin, the sickness, the pain. We are now as righteous as God created us. Do you understand? So with the blood of Jesus, God is happy again with us. He wants to have relationship again with us. But it's only through the blood of Jesus that we have that forgiveness. So we need to run to Christ to say, Ah, I am a sinner. Please forgive me. I receive you as my God and my Savior. And immediately you say that. Jesus will inject his blood into your heart and God will be happy with you again. Jesus will be happy with you again. You are now a child of God. You are free from pain. You are free from sickness. You are free from poverty. When sickness comes, you stand upon the blood of Jesus and you command that sickness to go. When devil wants to tempt you with sin, you stand upon the blood of Jesus and you command that temptation to stop. This is how powerful the blood of Jesus is. Wow. What do you observe from the experiment? Do you observe something? Do you see something? Do you see how our righteousness cannot save us? I, I don't lie. I don't steal. I don't, I, I don't disobey my mommy. I do everything right. Do you see how those things cannot save us? The more we try to do those things on our own, the more we fail. In that, uh, our experiment, it was just one thing that has the power to wipe away the sin, the sickness, the pain, the agony that we are going through. One thing. What do you see? What is that thing? It's the blood of Jesus, isn't it? Yes, immediately the sin came in contact with the blood of Jesus. Bam! disappeared. It turned us to become holy again, the way God. So, the blood of Jesus brings about forgiveness. 
He forgives us from all our sin. I see. Forgive us from all the lying, selfishness, cheating, cursing, quarreling, stealing, jealousy, bad, bad talk, disobedience, everything. The blood of Jesus forgives us from all our sin. The blood of Jesus also makes us to be a child of God. He restores the 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 issue we had with God, you know, when Adam sinned, God was angry with him. But when Jesus brought his blood and washed the sin, God became become happy or became happy with us again. So, you can see this guy here. Yeah. Mm, he was a sinner. But when he recognized that Jesus died on the cross of Calvary for him, he leverage on the death of Jesus. You can see, because that's the only thing that will give us joy, that will give us peace, that will give us righteousness, that will make us to unite, to be friends of God, to be children of God again. Is only what the cross of Jesus. That's why anyone who has not answered the call of Jesus will remain an enemy of God. But immediately you answer the call of Jesus, you become a child of God. You can see this guy. He was here. He was a sinner. But immediately he recognized that Jesus had died for me. Jesus had died for me. He did what? He went back to God. He went back straight. You seen the death of Jesus. He went back to God. Good. So the blood of Jesus makes us to become the child of God. He restores our relationship with God again, and he's our father, and we are, you are his son, and you are his daughter. The, also, the blood of Jesus brings about healing. You see, that child that was asking, we too, I am sick. Does Jesus still love me? Yes. Because Jesus had made provision for your healing when he died. You can see, he said, by his stripes, by these stripes, you can see the stripes on the body of Jesus. You can see the stripes. He did not carry the stripes to fulfill all righteousness. One of the reasons why he subjected himself to this pain and this agony is that you should be healed. But it depends on you to understand that Jesus had paid the price and you make you do what? You take delivery of what he had paid for you. So anytime you are sick or any of your brother or sister, your siblings is sick or any, your mommy and your daddy, remember that there is stripe upon Jesus that he carried to make sure that you are healed. Remember it and with that understanding you go into prayer and say I am healed by the stripes of Jesus I receive my healing in Jesus name. Amen. You pray that prayer for yourself. You pray that prayer for anyone around you. Your friends that fall sick. Pray that prayer for anyone around you. Do you understand? We are also saying that the blood of Jesus provides protection for us. Provides protection for us. Children, let's read this Matthew chapter 18, verse 10. It says, See that you do not look down on one of these little ones. For I tell you that there are angels in heaven. Always see the face of my Father in heaven. Wow. Do you know you have an angel? You don't know? Really? Yes, I'm telling you today, it's not me, it's the Bible that says it, it's the word of God. You know, God cannot lie. I'm sure you know God cannot lie. Yes, you believe God, that he doesn't lie. Good. His word says there is an angel that he has sent for you, I mean you, to guide you, to protect you. There is an angel for you to guide you and to protect you. So you don't have any reason to be afraid of anything, to be scared of anything. That is one of the benefits of the death of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. Another thing that we receive as the children of God on the cross of Calvary is provision. 
Psalm 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want anything good. When Adam sinned, you know, when he was in the garden of Eden, he was enjoying everything. He did not like any good thing. But when he sinned, God sent him away from the garden. He started suffering. He will go and plant here. Yeah, he will plant cassava. Sometimes rain will not fall, and everything that he plants will die. But when Jesus came and died on the cross of Calvary, he restored those things that he made provision for us that we are not lacking any good thing again because Jesus died on the cross of Calvary for us. That's why we say Jesus loves you unconditionally. Now, next thing is that Jesus gives you wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Jesus gives you wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Your brain is very powerful. Do you know God gives you a special brain to be to stand out to fulfill your destiny? Special brain. Your brain is awesome. It's your brain that controls everything that has to do with you. Your eyes, your mouth, your ear, your hand, everything about you is controlled by your brain. So with this brain, you can sing, you can play puzzle, you can read and understand, you can you have feelings, you can do art and craft, you can do it, you can learn anything. Your brain is a powerful instrument that God has given you because of the death of Jesus. He gave you supernatural wisdom to stand out in everything that you do. Wow, our case study is what we are using the prodigal son as a case study in the book of Luke chapter 15, 11 to 24. Luke 15, 11 to 24. Do you still remember the story of prodigal son? Good. Let's just quickly look at that story. You can see the prodigal son. He came. This is the prodigal son. This is his father. And this is his elder brother. The prodigal son came to his father. And say, Daddy, you know what? I want my own inheritance. Divide this inheritance. Give me my own portion of the property. I want to go and have fun. I want to go and start my own life. The father said, no problem. I'm going to give you anything that you ask. And the father divided everything and gave him his own portion. And he carried his own portion, entered his house, and off he goes. He traveled to a far country. He traveled to a far country. And when he got there, what did he do? Look at what he used the money to do. He was having fun, enjoying himself. Can you see what he's using the money to do? Can you see what he's using the money to do? He was having fun and enjoying himself until the money got finished. The money, every, he squandered everything. Nothing was left how he squandered the whole thing that his father had given to him. Do you see him sharing the money, giving the money away anyhow, dancing, drinking? He squandered the money. <laughs> what happened after that? Let's find that. See, see, he's not suffering. Can you see that he's suffering now? He's not suffering. Can you see him? Yes, he's suffering. He, in short, he does not even have food to eat again. Can you see? He came to, to share food with the pigs, animals. You can see him. He came to share food with animals. He was hungry. But one day, something happened. I told you he had a brain, powerful one. He had, he thought to himself, wait to, why am I suffering? Why am I here? Because I disobeyed my father because I've squandered my father's money, because I've gotten my, my father angry. No, I'm going back to go and say, I am sorry to my father. I'm going back to my daddy. I'm going to beg my daddy. I'm going to say, forgive me. Take me as your servant. Don't even take me as a son again. And he stood up and he went. And I was approaching the family, the, the house, 
the father was coming out. I saw him and the father was so excited. And the father ran after him and the father hugged him. Oh, my son is back again. Unconditional love. Unconditional love. The father did not say, no, don't enter into my house. Since you've squandered my things, I don't want you back here again. But the father went and hugged him. This is what we call the unconditional love. But don't forget, the prodigal son went to his father to go and say, I am sorry. But the father did not even wait to hear the sorry. He hugged him and he welcomed him back to the family. I want you to say this. Thank you, Jesus, for your unconditional love for me. Thank you for your death that has set me free from sin, sickness, and death. Please help me to love you too. Amen. Okay, this is the assignment. Please let mommy snap the assignment and send it to us via WhatsApp. God bless you. Hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you next week. God bless you.